Today we're going to be talking about blood pressure. You'll need either your notebook or a note packet. <clears throat> So we're first gonna talk about what a blood pressure is. And so you might've gotten your blood pressure taken at the doctor's office, but blood pressure is how hard the blood is pushing on the walls of the arteries. Remember that arteries take blood away from the heart. And because the heart is squeezing so much blood into them, there's, there's pressure. And this is kind of the same idea as when you turn on a faucet and you've got a hose connected to it. Sometimes that hose moves. The reason the hose moves is because there's pressure. And so if there's a lot of blood inside here, we're going to have a lot of pressure, a lot of force pushing on the outside of the walls. Your blood pressure is made up of two different numbers and you get a reading and we'll talk about what that is. But for now, we just need to know that it's the pressure that your blood pushes on the walls of the arteries. So there's two different numbers we're gonna talk about and two different things that are happening in the heart. So in the heart, we have systole. You can think of systole as squeeze. This is when the ventricles are contracting and squeezing. And the ventricles are down here and they're gonna pump blood out of the heart, either to go to the lungs or to the rest of the body. When we have systole happening, these ventricles are squeezing, there's a lot of blood going into these arteries. And when there's a lot of blood going into the arteries, the pressure is gonna be really high. So if we were to measure the blood pressure at a point where it's squeezing, we would get a higher number. We also have diastole, and diastole is when ventricles are relaxed. So this is an example. This is when they're filling up with blood. Because they're filling up here, these valves are shut, the semilunar valves. We're not having any blood flowing into the arteries here, so there's not going to be high pressure in those arteries. So when the ventricles are relaxed, there's not very high pressure. If we were to take our blood pressure when the ventricles are relaxing, it would be a lot lower. So the problem is, well, how do we figure out our blood pressure then? If we have two different things happening, we have a period of high pressure and a period of low pressure, what is our blood pressure then? Our blood pressure is actually both of these numbers combined. So when you get a blood pressure, it's two numbers, and it is systole, squeezing number, the contracting, where there's high pressure over diastole. So this top number is always going to be higher. The reason it's going to be higher is because this is when the ventricles are squeezing the blood out of the heart and there's going to be high pressure in our arteries. On the bottom here we have normal is anything less than 120 and less than 80. So it's not just enough to have this top number be less than 120. We also want the, less, the bottom number to be less than 80. Let's talk about what this means. So the top number is saying, what is the pressure when we're squeezing and pumping blood into the arteries? So we don't want that number to be super, super high. High blood pressure can damage the arteries, which is a problem. We also don't want the bottom number to be high because when our ventricles are relaxed, we don't want the pressure to be super high in those arteries. If it is, then there might be a problem going on as well. So less than 120 and also less than 80. If either of these numbers are higher than what they should be, you might uh, consider going to the doctor or having your doctor talk uh, to you about this. That being said, Stress and anxiety, a bunch of other things can contribute to a high blood pressure. So if yours is around 120 and around 80, you're doing just fine. Usually when I go to the doctor, it's somewhere around 120 um, and somewhere around 80. So here's a little chart we can look at. There's nothing to write down here, but normal is less than 120 and less than 80. Okay, typically if you've got elevated blood pressure, what happens is that that top number goes up first. Okay, so elevated, we've got high blood pressure and we've got different stages of high blood pressure. And we'll talk about what impa impacts your blood pressure in a minute, but high blood pressure is a problem because having too much pressure 
on the walls of your arteries can damage them over time. So what affects blood pressure then? Um, we'll talk about a couple different things here. So my first question, nothing to write down here, is what would happen? Let's imagine this balloon is like my arteries, okay? If I made my balloon smaller, what? but I kept the same amount of stuff inside, what would happen to the pressure? Like imagine this is a water balloon. I try to fit the same amount of water, but in a smaller balloon. There's gonna be more pressure. The same thing happens with your arteries. If your arteries are smaller, there's a higher pressure. You might be wondering, well, how do my arteries get smaller? Well, there's something called plaque that can build up. And this can build up because your arteries are getting damaged um, from high blood pressure. It can build up because of diet and cholesterol intake, but this plaque can cause the arteries to narrow. And when they narrow, there's a higher pressure because it's trying to fit the same amount of stuff in a smaller space. We also have some other things as well. We've got age. Okay, so as you get older, your arteries aren't as elastic or flexible, and so they can't expand as much. So typically your blood pressure increases as you get older. Family history. Genetics plays a huge role. Some people have um, high blood pressure, but they are the fittest people. They eat all the right foods. They don't smoke, yet they have high blood pressure. So genetics plays a role. Physical activity. So physical activity can help um, lower your blood pressure. Smoking. So smoking, actually the chemicals inside of uh, tobacco can actually cause your blood pressure to increase. So basically your blood pressure here is controlled by a whole bunch of different hormones and signals in your body. And sometimes some of these things that we eat or drink or alcohol or tobacco, those kinds of things can mess with those signals. My next question is what would happen to the blood pressure if I added more water to this same balloon? Well, the pressure in the balloon would increase. So if we add more water, that's also going to increase our pressure. And so you might be wondering, well, how do I add more water to my blood? It's not as simple as just drinking water. Um, that's not going to do it. If you drink a lot of water, your kidneys say, oh, well, we, we can filter out the excess water. Drinking water is good for you. But salt, again, don't need to write this down. We'll write salt in a second. But what happens here is salt, if you eat a lot of sodium, it causes water to go into your bloodstream because it says, oh, your blood is too salty. So it wants to dilute it by adding extra water, which then adds a lot of extra pressure. So if you know of anybody who has heart disease or a heart condition um, or high blood pressure, they are asked to limit their sodium intake or salt intake. And so uh, salt is another thing. And then my last question is, what would happen to blood pressure if we had less water in the balloon? So if we had less water, we would probably have less pressure. So things like dehydration, if you're dehydrated, your blood's not gonna have as much water in it, which would impact your blood pressure and it would lower your blood pressure. So we talked about these, salt intake is one we're gonna write down then. And then we're also gonna write, oh, we already had tobacco use. <laughs> Um, and then if you wanted to, you could write dehydration as well. The last thing to think about that I would like you to write down is why is high blood pressure a problem? Well, it causes the heart to work harder. So the heart physically has to push harder to get the blood through the arteries. The other thing is high blood pressure can cause little tears in our arteries, which then can cause back to build up. So basically when you get these little tiny tears in your arteries, what happens? Your body says, hey, let's fix them. Kind of almost forms clots, these big plaques on the inside of your arteries, which then narrows them. Um, and this can lead to heart attack or stroke. And we will talk about how heart attacks work in another lesson.